Hi everybody, welcome to the Farm and Country Podcast. My name is Adam. Today is episode 12. Hey, guess what? We got something awesome for you. We now have an online store and we have got some nifty stuff for you and your brand new or already established homestead. Every homesteader needs tools, guys. This isn't the caveman days where you smash two rocks together and wash your clothes in the river, okay? We need tools, we need technology, we need stuff. And sometimes we have to go out and buy stuff. Being off-grid doesn't mean that you don't spend money. And we have stocked the best stuff for you guys. Check us out, www.farmandcountry.store. You see what I did there? Really simple. Farmandcountry.store. Free shipping. And here's the best part. I haven't even told you the best part yet, okay? For the entire month of May, from the time you hear my voice until May 31st. Wait, is there 31 days? Yeah, okay. May 31st. There is 15% off for all Farm and Country podcast listeners. Just use the coupon code FCP at your checkout to get an immediate 15% off your entire order. Also, any order of $100 gets an extra 10% off. So, listen guys, keep an eye on this store. It's just a new thing. There's probably, you know, some typos in there, but we are working on it very hard because, you know, we got we to gotta make our own dream come true, right? This podcast is all about making your dream come true, and we are making ours come true. So today is Wednesday, and I'm reviewing an article, except it's not strictly an article. It's more of a PDF information file. And I picked this one because uh, today is a special day here at Sunset Meadows Farm. We have 24 ewes, that's sheep, that are coming to live here on the farm and they're going to be delivered I already paid for them I paid a lot of money for them but they are good breeding stock they're good quality sheep they uh, they're not coming from very far away but it's far enough that I didn't want to drag my trailer out there and uh, I thought I I think I got a pretty good deal on them but I mean they're not cheap Um, except if you're somebody that's ever bought cattle before you probably think that that it's cheap. I paid about eight thousand dollars Canadian for twenty-four ewes, plus a ram, plus transport. So that's that's what I paid, and I thought it was worth it. Uh, we've done this before. We've had sheep before, and I want to talk about doing sheep. So here I have sitting in front of me. I got a document from the Alberta government called "Setting It Up Sheep Infrastructure." And you know what? You're going to find a lot of these documents online or these information files about having sheep. And they're going to tell you, most of them are going to tell you the same kinds of things because I'm finding in my investigations and going and visiting people that most people are doing sheep the same way. Um, but it's not, it's not necessarily the most efficient way. And we'll talk about a few of those inefficiencies that people are are doing when they when they get sheep I'm not saying that they're doing it totally wrong because it's you know there's many ways to skin a cat sorry if you like cats and that's a terrible picture in your mind but there is many ways to make something work and just like with anything else raising sheep is something that there are many paths to success so the path that I'm using is called I mean, I call it the path of least resistance because I intend to do the least amount of work possible. And that's not because I'm lazy, guys. It's because I've got so many other things on the go that I just cannot afford to spend a whole bunch of time dealing with animals. So you're not going to see me doing things like bottle feeding lambs by hand. Uh, You're not going to see me doing things like um, feeding well, there's a bunch of things that you're not going to see me doing. Any kind of labor-intensive thing, I'm making a stringent and exceeding effort to cut it out. 
You know, I want... I, I talked about this before. There's a principle called the 80-20 principle, and I got this out of a book called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. It's an old book, but it's still out there. It's, it's a good book, and I, I suggest you read it, actually. It's a really good read. Um, I think you could probably just get a copy on Kindle or something like that. But one of the habits is the 80-20 rule, or at least one of the principles is. And the idea is that 80% of your results come from 20% of your effort. So the trick is don't try for 100% because you're going to put in 100% effort. You know, you could, you could spend, you know, 80 hours a week managing a flock of sheep. You really could. And you would get the most out of that flock that is, you know, physically possible. So when you're talking about raising sheep, people are always looking to get, number one, they want to get a better weight for their lambs. And number two, they want to get more lambs that live to, to be sold. Um, so that's the two things that make people money when they're raising sheep. And I'm, you know, I'm looking to make some money. So I'm looking to optimize those two things as much as possible okay but I'm only looking to spend 20% of the effort and I expect to get 80% of the results from my 20% of the effort and I know I can do it because I've seen it being done and I know other people that are doing it so before you write me and tell me that oh, I want you should put a hundred percent into your uh, blah 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 okay don't bother um, I don't even have time to read your email. That's how busy I am. I got a lot of things I want to do. Making this podcast is one of those things. And I I care a lot about this podcast, and I want to make it good. But, you know, we've got the store. I've got my full-time job. There's a lot going on this summer. So looking at this setting it up street, sorry, sheep infrastructure, it's a hard word to say for some reason, um, the first thing that you're going to hear people tell you is that you need a barn for sheep. Um, okay, so you don't. You don't need a barn for sheep. You need shelter, but you do not need a barn. And this is one thing that everybody kept asking me, you know, well, where do the sheep live? As if sheep are like people. They need a bed and, you know, someone to tuck them in at night and tell them stories about humans jumping over fences or Something like that. I don't know. Um, okay, sheep lived outside for thousands of years before human beings came in contact with them. They can do just fine with a little tiny bit of shelter. You know, in the wild, sheep will go and they'll find, you know, a little overhang. They'll find a tree. They'll find a bush to sit under when they need it. And they'll always stay within range of something that meets their needs. So in the wild, you'll see mountain sheep. They'll be... Oh, in the mountains, there's lots of shelter, there's lots of food, there's lots of water. Uh, obviously, we're not in the mountains. At least I'm not. Maybe you are. But here, I have to recreate that environment as much as possible to give my sheep the best chance at surviving. So I need shelter. It doesn't have to be enclosed shelter. Sheep have this cool little thing on them called a wool coat. And there are two kinds of sheep. There are sheep that are called hair sheep, and they'll lose a lot of their hair over time. Now that's the wild kind of sheep. They do that too. They they grow their hair really thick, their well, their wool thick in the wintertime, and then they'll lose it in the summertime. In fact, you'll find all kinds of animals doing that. You know, cattle, uh, even dogs will have their winter coat. Uh, sheep. Hair sheep have a winter coat and then they shed it. And for the most part, you don't really need to shear them because they'll manage their own hair loss, basically. So if you're looking for hair sheep, you'll find that hair sheep are more sort of genetically uh, natural, I guess you could say. And there's a lot of benefits to hair sheep, um, except that they're not strictly optimized for... Um, being kept in domestic settings, let's say. They tend to be a little bit more wild, a little bit less domesticated. Um, 
there's pluses and minuses to that. I mean, hair sheep are maybe a little bit better at defending themselves, at maybe escaping predators, but um, let's be honest. I mean, none of them are very good at that anyway. So we are going with wool sheep, and we've got a breed called Suffolk. And the Suffolk breed is an ancient, ancient breed, and it comes from England, from a little place called Suffolk. Uh, a lot of sheep breeds do come from England, and some of them come from France. And there's one that was developed right here in Canada. Uh, it's called the Rideau. Yeah, Rideau. I mean, most people call them just Rideau. But there's also Cheviot. There's, oh, there's tons. So we're going with the Suffolk breed, and they're a wool breed, so they have to be sheared. So we're going to have to get someone in to shear them. And we've got another sheep that needs to be sheared as well. We had one left over from last year. And we also have some alpacas that came to be with us by a, well, let's just say it was just a series of events that happened. <laughs> Somebody brought them by for grazing, and they just stayed. He couldn't get them back on the truck. So I guess that's kind of a funny story. So anyway, talking about barns for sheep, do you need a barn? No, because sheep are fully cap fully capable of being outside for about 95% of the time. 95% of the time, your sheep are going to be perfectly comfortable outdoors. Even when it's minus 30, they are fine. As long as they have food to eat and clean water to drink, your sheep will survive. I mean, don't shear them before winter. Let their coat grow out, but they will be perfectly fine. They do not have to be locked in a barn at night. The only reason that you'd want to do that is if you have a lot of predators around and putting them in the barn keeps them safe. Uh, I mean, even then, it's not a guarantee. Okay, so pushing that myth out of the way, sheep do need fencing. Okay, so sheep need a different kind of fencing from cattle, and this is something that I found out last year. Uh, the kind of fence you build is going to... It's going to make a big difference as to the there's 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 two reasons that you need a, a fence for sheep and the reason that everybody thinks about is because sheep will escape and yeah okay you yeah you definitely need the fence to keep the sheep from getting out but you also need fencing to keep predators from getting in and I expect to spend a little bit of time finding a solution for predators because we do have coyotes out here. Uh, so the best kind of fence for sheep is there's there's basically a number of different things but barbed wire not really great. Barbed wire is fine for cattle as fine for you know larger animals horses and whatever but for sheep you're gonna want something that's got little small squares in it so um, livestock panels are good. They're not cheap, though. Livestock panels are the really thick, heavy, welded, um, solid. I mean, it looks like you'd crash a car into them and probably not break them open. But again, you pay for that strength. So those livestock panels should go in the pen where the sheep uh, will spend most of their time. For areas that the sheep are just sort of up against but probably not trying to get through actively you can use something called page wire and page wire is just a weld not welded but it's sort of a mesh fencing that's got little knots in it it's fairly inexpensive but I gotta warn you it's not very strong so don't try to use page wire for any kind of fencing that the, the sheep are going to be trying to get through uh, that includes Fences that are next to lush gardens because, you know, sheep, they'll see something on the other side of the fence and they want to get to it. And if you haven't trained them to stay on your side of the fence, they're going to try and slip under that fence. And that's the other difference with sheep and fencing is that sheep almost never will jump a fence, especially if it's quite tall. I've seen them do it, but... 99% of the time, they're going to try and duck underneath it, which is why your fencing needs to go pretty much right to the ground. And that will also help keep predators, like coyotes, 
Well, mostly coyotes. I don't know if you've got wolves. Uh, maybe fences will keep wolves out. They're a bit bigger than coyotes. But it'll keep them out of there as well, I think. But it'll stop the sheep from ducking underneath the fence. And that was the problem I had last year, is that no matter what I did, these sheep were still ducking underneath the fence all the time until I finally got rid of the the rascal. There was one sheep of the group that kept leading the others astray. So that's another reason that I sold all of those sheep is that they were not the breed and the temperament that I wanted. I want sheep that are trained to, to come and eat from a bucket or from a trough if I'm trying to feed them grain. And I want sheep that know where they live, basically. So I fully expect to spend the next two or three days basically training the sheep to come and sort of live in their area. And I've prepared a little area for them. So that's a good strategy to use, guys, if you're getting sheep. So let's talk about if you're wanting to look into sheep, why should you get into sheep? So I've talked about us getting the sheep and what we're doing, but I haven't talked about why. Why would you want to get into sheep? Out here where I'm at, everyone is cattle. It's cattle, 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 cattle. And there are millions of cattle in the province of Alberta. Everybody loves cattle. And why not? I mean, beef is good. And, you know, everybody eats beef. But the problem with doing what everybody else is doing is that you basically get the price that everyone else is getting. It's much harder to start a business when everyone else is doing the same business as you. You know, if I wanted to go out and start a gas station in an area that already had 15 gas stations, I've got my work cut out for me. So when I was looking at that, you know, the idea of getting some livestock out here, I... I didn't want to just go and do what everybody else was doing, even though it does create some some ease. There is some easy things about doing what everybody else is doing. It means that you've got lots of experts around you. It means you've got lots of supplies around you. It means that you can source your animals easily. But it also means that everyone else around you thinks they know what they're doing. And if you do it a little bit differently, they're going to say, Ah, oh, you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do this. You shouldn't do that. So I'm the only sheep farmer in this area, and I can pretty much do what I want. Nobody's ever going to tell me that I'm doing it wrong. And I fully expect, guys, that I'm going to make a few mistakes along the way. I mean, I, I think I know what I'm doing. I have a good idea. I have lots of sort of basic knowledge on these things. But as far as the practical application, we've only had one year of doing this. And the one year was good, but it wasn't to the scale that we're doing right now. 24 sheep is a lot more than, you know, the the 7 or 8 ewes that we had last year and uh, the, the 10 lambs that we got, of which 3 died, which was kind of sucky, but I know exactly what happened and I'm not going to repeat that same mistake. So we're scaling by degrees. And this is the strategy that I fully recommend that you follow. If you're going to start with something... You know, start small because starting, you know, at full tilt is going to, you're going to pull your hair out and, and scream and you're going to want to quit before you even get halfway through. So why would you get into sheep versus cattle? Well, to put it frankly, sheep are easier. I know that everybody thinks that sheep are harder, but they're not. Um, they're easier because they're smaller um, they, let's see, some of the ways that they're easier. They're small, of course, being smaller, they're easier to manage. Uh, sheep will follow each other much more readily than cattle will. Um, it's a lot easier to round sheep up. Once you get the lead sheep going, the rest will follow. Whereas cattle, if you're trying to round them up, you know, you've really got to push on them to get them going. And we had cattle grazing out here last year, so I know that that's true. I had to get a quad out there and, you know, basically, basically go up and kick them in the ankles to get them moving sometimes. Um, cattle are much bigger, and if a cow wants to get through a fence, there isn't really anything that's going to stop that cow from getting through the fence. 
But mostly, I didn't want to do what everybody else was doing because I just, I don't like doing that. I'm not a do what else, do what everyone else is doing kind of guy. So I wanted to do something a little bit different, a little bit unique, and I wanted to carve my own niche out in this agriculture business. Now, sheep are a growing business here in Alberta, and being a growing business, it means that prices for sheep are good. Um, there's basically a few ways to sell sheep, and I'll go through the three main ways that you can sell sheep. If you're raising sheep, here are three ways to sell your sheep, okay? Number one, take them to the auction, all right? I don't recommend doing that. I always recommend, before you consider taking a, a one sheep or a group of sheep to the auction, try to sell them privately. And, you know, don't try and pay for these expensive ads. There are tons and tons and tons of free listing services that you can use. Here in Canada, we have Kijiji. Uh, I don't know if Americans have Kijiji. Hopefully you do. It's an awesome service. You know, you get six photos and it's free. And your, your ad stays up there for up to 30 days. Um, some of the, the categories aren't free, like selling um, selling dogs and cats is not free. But most of them, it's free. And it's awesome because everybody uses it. And when everybody uses something, it becomes like Facebook, where it becomes just this valuable resource. So everything that I've ever bought and sold in terms of sheep, I've done it off of Kijiji. And, of course, that's the second way to sell your sheep is privately, okay? So how you do is you take a picture of the sheep and you say, okay, I've got two ewes here that are open, that is, they're not bred. Or I've got two ewes and a ram and I want this much money for them. And you take a picture of them and post it up there and you just sit and wait. Now, if you really want to push your ad, you can pay to have your ad pop up at the top of the listings and I've done that before with some ads but not sheep ads because I've never had to uh, every time I've posted sheep for sale I have three or four or five people like pop up oh yeah hey I'll take those I'll take them and then when the guy did come by to take the sheep uh, he wanted to know if I wanted to sell the lambs too and I said nope I don't want to sell the lambs they're going to be uh, food so private sales for me, awesome. Generally speaking, you will definitely get your best price for private sales. Because, you know, livestock that are good and healthy are valuable. And, I mean, depending on what your area is, um, a healthy you or a healthy ram is worth uh, quite a bit of money, especially rams. Uh, here in Alberta, a ram is worth anywhere from... 400 to 500 to 600 dollars for a good ram and it's not because they're big huge animals in fact you couldn't pick the ram out in a crowd uh, they're about the same size as the ewes or maybe smaller so it's a it's kind of an interesting difference between cattle and sheep the rams the males are smaller and uh, that that makes them easier to manage of course we had a bull out here last year and that thing was like a tank and he rubbed up against my shed and broke the window it was crazy so the third way to sell your sheep and this is the way that I'm gonna be selling my sheep from here on in um, I'm gonna be selling packaged frozen lamb to the end consumer and guys I'll tell you the sky is the limit on selling freezer meat to the end consumer so you can do what I did last year and just sell, you know, last year I sold my lambs at a, a quite a discount to what the normal prices are. And uh, what was I asking? I think I was asking six fifty, maybe uh, in some cases $7. And then, you know, if somebody wanted a small order, some of the, the cuts would be up to 9 or $11 a pound. And, you know, that's because it takes more time to make small orders and, Basically, somebody's paying for me for my time and not more for the lamb. But um, I have a mentor. His name is Ray. And he does a large sheep operation. 
and I looked at his prices because he's posted right on his website. And this guy is selling um, basically a package of 20 pounds for 100 bucks. 20 pounds. I think it might have actually been 17 pounds. And I think it might have been more like $115 Canadian. But that's because he's got a premium product. He's got a premium product that's that's good, it's re reliable, and he delivers it, and he charges for it. And as far as I can tell, he's got customers for all of his lamb. Uh, I know he's only been doing it for like three or four years at this capacity, but he, you know, he's doing well. He's been featured in magazines, he's been featured in newspapers, online. So, I mean, he's making a name for himself in the sheep world. And if you guys, you know, if you want to do something... Don't do it half arsed. You know, doing something half arsed is a recipe to be frustrated and burned out. If you're going to do something like sheep and you've only got 20 of them, market them well and don't undercharge for what you have produced. So here's another example of, you know, the, the prices of meat. I was raising free range chickens. Now, I, I mean, you can go to the grocery store, you could buy a chicken for. 10 bucks or something like that. I don't know. It's like a three pound chicken. Um, it's basically, it tastes like soggy, wet newspaper rolled up in a sock and you get what you pay for. But I was selling free range chickens that were bigger for 25 bucks and even some that were 30 bucks and people were buying them. And not only were they buying them, they were saying, Hey, Hey, come on, raise some more chickens, man. I love those chickens. They were begging me to raise more chickens. Now, unfortunately, I'm not raising any more chickens, at least not this year, um, because I'm not crazy. Regardless of how much efficiency in <laughs> my time management I get, I just don't have enough time to do chickens. My plate is full. But chickens was an excellent business idea, and we'll talk about that on one of our Fridays. Oh, by the way, Friday, every Friday's episode is going to have a big money-making idea for you. Uh, I wanted to create a lot of value for this podcast. I wanted to give you guys as much value as possible and also get you guys excited about living your dream life. So one of those exciting things about living in the country is you know the, the many, many ways that you can make money out in the country. So we're going to bring a new one every Friday. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about a few ways to make it work, some of the drawbacks, you know, whether it's hard or easy or, or sort of medium difficulty, a new one every Friday. And this Friday, you guessed it, we're talking about sheep. So, <laughs> so that should be good. So the last thing I'll leave you guys with is a few of the things that we're doing to just make our sheep raising more efficient so I don't have a barn you know I don't have a whole bunch of pens that I'm penning the sheep in and feeding them hay what I do have is grass and I've got lots of grass now what what people like to do when they get into livestock especially commercial livestock and it's you know farmers do this a lot they they take an idea and they expand it like a thousand times so they start a sheep operation with like 2,000 sheep and you know they scale it up and they have these massive barns and they've got this huge they got this huge streamlined thing where they've got you know this group of rams doing this and this group of ewes doing this and you know what guys that's a viable business and it produces a lot but it's a lot of work too. Um, the kind of business that I'm going to teach you about is a small scale and super profitable business. And one of the ways that I make it profitable is by not spending a bunch of money feeding animals when I've got perfectly good grass out in the field. Now, obviously, the grass doesn't grow year round. However, there are ways to make that grass last throughout most of the year. It's called year round grazing. It's an awesome system to get into, and it is absolutely the foundation for any successful livestock operation, whether you're doing cattle, 
uh, goats, sheep. Well, I guess that's kind of the main three. But, I, I, you know, there are people out there raising deer, I guess. Um, even, you know, chickens and stuff like that. You've got to get your land producing. You've got to stop thinking of yourself as raising sheep and more like you're raising grass, okay? And the health of your pasture makes a huge difference to the overall success and profitability of your sheep operation, okay? Remember that. We're going to come back to that again on Friday. So that's it for this episode, guys. Once again, hey, check out the store, www.farmandcountry.store. Okay, it could not be easier. There'll be a link in the show notes. If you're on iTunes, obviously, you won't see the show notes, but you can always find us, this podcast, posted online every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at farmandcountrypodcast.com. And with that, I'm out, guys. I'm out to keep building my fence 